Think Epcot is just another theme park? Think again. Epcot is a living showcase of culture and technology. Epcot has always been changing, but recent additions are shaping this iconic park, and some might have missed the mark. Has Epcot's latest overhaul lived up to this vision? Let's explore the new attractions and additions to the park, deciding if they inspire as much as they entertain. So let's journey back 60 years to the dawn of recorded Epcot, who trace the path of this dream, from its earliest beginnings to the promise of the future. As we all know, Epcot was originally more than a park. It was a dream Walt Disney thought of a massive city at the intersection of imagination and technology. At Epcot, guests could learn about the latest developments in technology. The icon of this massive project would have been a large mixed-use complex, with a cosmopolitan hotel in the middle, envisioned to house a micro-city within a building, something like an international shopping center. Transportation was also a major part of Walt's original project, with monorails and people movers taking where you needed to go. Epcot was ambitious, unfortunately, Walt Disney passed away. The dream of Epcot would live on, however. Roy Disney, despite the numerous challenges, went forward with Disney World and opened the Magic Kingdom in 1971. However, at this point, the dream of a utopia was dead. With the Students' Revolution of 1968, the ideas of a perfectly master-planned community became a thing of the past. Ideas of urban renewal were slowly phased out. Yet. In the background, we saw slowly the transformation of Epcot from a city to a theme park. This theme park would later be comprised of two parts. Epcot would be a permanent world's fair. Architect Arata Isozaki compares Epcot with Expo 70 in Osaka. Like Epcot, Expo 70 appeared to sustain faith in modernity as progress. A strain of utopianism, however, much exposed to the critique of current sightings with 1968 survive in it. Still, Epcot would be a place for inspiration, where people of all ages would not only be entertained, but also educated, drive to inspire its visitors. From the latest technologies to a glimpse into the future, Epcot Center opened in 1982. In its first decade of operation, Epcot was incredibly innovative. The park featured outstanding rides with incredible set dressing and storytelling. Epcot Center, on its first 10 years, was a work of art. A large part of what made Epcot so incredible when it opened were the themes that each attraction had, whether it was communication or imagination. Each ride brought you on a journey of discovery and awareness. Sure, it wasn't perfect, however Epcot did accomplish what it set out to do, entertain, inform and inspire. A great example of this is Horizons, a ride that opened in 1983 and brought you into a journey of the future. It wasn't just a utopic vision into a fantasy world, it was a ride about what man can accomplish when we dream about the future. Instead of visiting the world from a bird's eye point of view, you saw it from the perspective of a family, experiencing everyday life, from a big city to outer space. It wasn't a ride about predictions, but a ride about how we can shape the future together, because if we can dream it, we can do it. Unfortunately, since the theme park was so great at the start, the park would slowly lose its quality. You see, Epcot was envisioned as a park that would be forever changing, with updates every 10 years. Ironically, it was this strive for forever progress that eventually brought the park down. In its second phase, Epcot tried to appeal to a larger audience with Ellen's Energy Adventure and Captain EO. Innovations was a bad use of the space it went into, with blacked out windows and a space that looked more like a tech convention than a theme park experience. This removed the incredible views of the pavilions from the space. The worst case of this revamp was Journey into Your Imagination, which was a complete train wreck of a ride and an absolute joke overhaul. We can see that Disney ended up doing the opposite of what they have always been good at. They built 
forever timeless attractions. But with Epcot's ambitions of being the theme park of the future, well, the park to suffer from the worst of postmodernism and ended up with an identity crisis. Should it be about the future or should it be about today? There were attempts to make Epcot timeless, like Discoveryland at Disneyland Paris. However, this never happened. So how should Epcot evolve? What should it look like? That was the question Disney had to answer. In 2017, we saw the first steps to renovate and reimagine Epcot. The park would replace Alan's Energy Adventure with Guardians of the Galaxy and introduce Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. The park would strive to be more family, more timeless and more Disney. A direct response to many of the criticism the park got. In 2019, we got more details and designs that would never see the light of day. It is at this moment when we notice an interesting phenomenon in theme park design theory. The decision to undertake massive park renovations as seen with Epcot, Disney's California Adventure and Disney's Hollywood Studios possesses significant challenges. These large-scale projects necessitate closing of substantial areas of the park for extended periods, disrupting the guest experience and creating a sense of unfinished business. Disney California Adventure and Hollywood Studios both underwent significant overhauls, resulting in parks that look and feel completely different from their original iterations. While these renovations introduced popular attractions and did fix some of the problems of the parks, they also led to identity crisis, with the parks struggling to find a cohesive theme. However, what is the Epcot of today? When we first entered the park, we were greeted by a renovated entrance experience, bringing back the fountain pylons that were inspired by muskets. The project also saw the relocation of Liva Legacy. Overall, the entrance experience is very much improved. We also saw the addition of LED lights on Spaceship Earth, allowing the park to present more dynamic shows geared to the park's many festivals. This was one of the best additions to the Epcot overall, creating new experience for guests that are more than Instagrammable moments. They inspire. Spaceship Earth was also supposed to be renovated with a theme about storytelling rather than communication. However, the worldwide pandemic affected such plans. Another great addition to Epcot was Space 220, a restaurant that seemed to fit perfectly at Epcot. Here guests travel into space where they can sit and watch astronauts and spaceships outside. However, Epcot was also supposed to get the Play Pavilion to replace Wonders of Life. This, in my opinion, would have been a very mediocre pavilion that didn't live up to its name, Play. Instead, the pavilion took on an uninspired Internet of Things look with Disney emoji all over the main facades. The pavilion never stopped to ask the question. Why do we play? And seem to be more like a replacement for the character spot, where you could encounter many Disney walk-around characters. But would this pavilion have really inspired the kids to use the power of playing? Well, some scientists believe while playing, kids discover new things. They experiment with their toys, for instance. And I feel as if that is not reflected here, meaning it's lacking in its inspirational goals. At the end of the day, this pavilion never materialized. However, the biggest change would come to the spine of the park. Epcot's original design featured two communicore buildings flanking the spine, reminiscent of the symmetry found in the Vatican. This balanced layout created a sense of harmony and coherence. The demolition of one side of communicore has significantly altered the symmetry, disrupting the intended visual balance. The remaining east side now features a food court and a Starbucks with plans for Epcot, the city on the floor. The notion of stepping on Disney's vision literally can be seen as a painful metaphor for how far the park has strained from its original roots. The story is fine by itself, it doesn't have the kinetic energy Centaurion had or the thematic cohesion Mouse Gear had. The most painful part comes to the Center Gardens, where once lay the Fountain of Nations. One of the most glaring omissions in the new design is the absence of a central fountain. The original plan for Epcot Spy would have included two small fountains intended to serve as a focal point and gathering place for visitors. The removal of these features has left a void in the center of the park, both literally and metaphorically. 
Fountains have always been a symbolic place in Disney parks, representing creativity, movement and life. Its absence here feels like a missed opportunity to create a vibrant central space. Anything would have been nice, it doesn't need to be a fountain in a traditional sense, maybe a path with water or a reflection pond. The new statue of Walt Disney, coupled with expansive gardens and large shade structures, aims to create a reflective and serene environment that's called Dreamer's Point. While the intention is noble, the execution seems to lack engagement and interactivity that Epcot is known for. Sure, there are some LED lights on the ground that don't light up anymore, while the gardens and shade structures do offer a place for guests to relax, their utilitarian design does not inspire or captivate. These spaces, as observed, are underutilized by guests, some even resorting to activities like playing football, which indicates a design that fails to engage with visitors in a meaningful way. The lighting in the area is done really well, but it doesn't fix the other issues present. Of course, the materials used here are nice, in fact, these benches and tables should work really nice in a city park or public spaces, but this space does not inspire. And overall, Dreamer's Point does not have a cohesive theme. One side features these patterns on the floor that relate to the innovations east and west. The other side has these large corrugated steel structures. The other spaces are more underwhelming, while nice they lack inspiration, and often you find people sitting here just to charge their phones, which at the end of the day is the opposite of inspiration. The removal of just one Comunicore building has created a symmetrical perspective. The resulting imbalance is further compounded by the presence of Journey of Water, which instead of filling the void, emphasizes the absence of the original structures. Demolishing one of the buildings was a weird decision. On the one hand, it opened up vistas to the pavilions from the center of the park, allowing for great visibility and a more open view. On the other hand, Removing only one side has created an uneven, disjointed look. While the open views of the pavilions are a positive change, the asymmetry caused by demolishing one Communicore building is glaring. Moreover, the placement of Moana Journey of Water negates the advantage of this open space, as it fails to provide a cohesive transition between the center of the park and the Living Seas Pavilion. Overall, Moana Journey of Water represents a missed opportunity to enhance the thematic and visual cohesion of Epcot. Instead of integrating with the park's spine and the Living Seas Pavilion, it stands apart, contributing to a disjointed experience that undermines the original vision of the park. Journey of Water could have provided a natural progression from the spine of the park to the Seas Pavilion enhancing the narrative of water and the environment. Instead, its isolated placement creates an odd vistas. Another incredibly short-sighted decision was to demolish half of Innovations West and then rebuild it. This was because this area was originally envisioned as a suspended pavilion with a rooftop garden, allowing for festival events and incredible views. This building would serve as a flex space for festivals. However, with the economic headwinds brought by 2020, these plans were scrapped. Disney had to basically rebuild half of the west side of the former Innovations building. Let's look back in time. What did we have here in 2019? An open space, another area that was used for event, club cool, and a character spot. Now what do we have here? Well, a stage, a space used for temporary events, and a character spot. Yes, we're back to 2019, basically. Remember character spot? It's basically in the same spot. However, this building feels like a part of a bigger problem, with references to Spaceship Earth and Epcot of old. This creates an interesting experience, Epcot trying to live up to what it was so many decades ago. It's kinda sad. Thankfully, there are many spaces to cry here. Epcot now forever seems stuck in a forever self-referentialness, forever stuck in trying to live up to its past glory, which at the end of the day is basically a reflection of our contemporary society. So, do I blame the designers for these bad decisions? No. It seems as if we as a society have lost all hope in our future. Let's ponder this 
a few moments, right? With everything being super expensive, we can't even afford a house right now. But I think there's a bigger society change. Imagine the world is like an Instagram feed. You get 5 second video and you scroll by. And after a while you realize you have been on Insta for at least 2 hours. This is because we are training our brains to short term rewards. With our brains being so focused in short term rewards, we lose sight of tomorrow. And I mean literal tomorrow, like the day after today, or even preparing food or remembering to sleep. Ironically, our push for technology has resulted in ourselves creating a poison and voluntarily drinking it. With all of this sociological experiment, I posed the following question to you. What do you want your future to be? What do you see yourself doing in 50 years? I think my generation has lost sight of that. When I look back at the original Epcot with rides like Horizons and Journey to Imagination, I saw a park that didn't just want to sell tickets, it wanted to inspire its visitors. Yes, some rides got outdated, but the concepts and the imagination they brought were truly awe-inspiring. Unfortunately, Epcot focused too much on short-term gains, with the introduction of celebrity rides like Captain EO. The introduction of IPs is not in thesis wrong, but I believe there are some drawbacks. First is the themes associated with the original IP. Nemo does have the potential to teach kids about fish and conservation, but can it really inspire kids when it comes to undersea exploration? Guardians of the Galaxy is a fun ride and a nice IP, but is stealing and causing multi-galactical conflicts really something Epcot should strive for? The queue of Guardians of the Galaxy is great, but it doesn't really teach you anything worth when you learn about the uniforms of a fake nation and the aircraft and urbanism of said fake planet. Yes, you learn about Walt Disney, but using a fake movie city as an example can be a bit misguided, as guests don't have a real-world example to look to. Another person was designed We recently learned that your terrible vision Disney and similar to with his early concepts for the experimental prototype community. Ratatouille is a movie that could fit at Epcot, and I think the ride did an okay job of that, even though it's a copy and paste from Walt Disney Studios Park or now Adventure World. The fact the ride was originally made for French-British audience helped educate young Americans on French cuisine. However, the area outside the ride is a bit lacking, especially the La Creperie de Paris, with a lackluster interior. My point is while IPs can be fun, the use of IP can be problematic if done incorrectly. Epcot was a park that made you reflect on the future, but when our society has basically lost all hope, can we really reflect on the future? This is a question I'll leave open. On the one hand, with the current condition of our society, it seems Epcot could inspire and thus create a bigger impact. On the other hand, have we gone too far? Who guests not care anymore? I believe we should inspire the next generation, and Epcot would be a real-world physical environment where learning is an experience. May Epcot entertain, inform and inspire, and above all, may it instill a new sense of belief and pride in man's ability to shape a world that offers hope to people everywhere in the world.